Well, right now in New York, there is a push, and it is to stop the state from prosecuting 16 and 17-year-old offenders as adults. Now, New York is one of only two states in the entire country that, in fact, do that. A campaign called Raise the Age, it is calling on the state to treat the folks under the age of 18 as juveniles. And I spoke to some key advocates when it comes to that effort. I'm very pleased to be joined by Allison Lake, Deputy Director for the Children's Health Initiative at the Westchester Children's Association in White Plains. It's an advocate for the Raising the Age Initiative. And we're also joined by Christian Philemon, Christian's Executive Director for the Youth Shelter Program of Westchester. Shelter provides an alternative to jail for young men awaiting disposition of various criminal charges. And Jermaine McLeod of New Rochelle, who has experienced firsthand the criminal justice as a youth, and he's now involved in the youth shelter program himself. Everyone, thank you very much for a few minutes. Um, I think a lot of people would be surprised to know, Allison, New York's one of only two states that treats 16 and 17-year-olds as adults. Um, and us in North Carolina, and most people would think New York, right. uh, as blue a state as we are, mm -hmm. but that's the reality. We're talking about a lot of kids here, aren't we? We are, um, and I think certainly the general public is often shocked when we are out speaking that we say New York and North Carolina are the only two states that charge youth as young as 16 as adults in the criminal justice system. Um, because on so many other issues, New York um, is more progressive than many other states um, in the nation. And it really does impact um, our young people. And I think for us, in terms of advocates, when we know so much more about brain science and the development of young people, and that the brain really isn't fully developed until age 24 or 25. And so we do a real disservice, I think, to treating our 16 and 17 year olds as adults in the system. And uh, most recent numbers have it around 800 uh, kids here. Um, and we'll put a face on it in a second. But you you see them at different stages right now. Um, before we talk about what it's like inside and then also some of the consequences for a 16 and a 7 year old to be in a, a jail or a prison here, um, talk about the different faces that come through here and how, you know, you see a crime on a blotter, that's one thing, but the one you see the face and the size and the age of the kid and the readiness, it's a different story. That's, that's exactly correct, Richard. We see uh, young as 16 uh, up to ages 21, right? And so the younger kids come in uh, and charged with a number of offenses. Most of our kids are nonviolent felonies or misdemeanors. And Jermaine, uh, let's put a face on you. Um, you were a teen, right? Yes, um, and as I understand, there was both a robbery and assault. Yes, sir. Okay. 16, you're not in some juvie facility. No, sir. You, you went to a... Uh, an adult facility with adults. Yes, I gotta imagine that must have been a, a, st a scary time. It was a hard time. I mean, you know, you learn from it. You know, you're not prepared for it because at the age, you know, uh, you're not mentally, physically, you know, prepared to be in a situation of that. You know, it's uh, institutionalizes, it institutionalizes you. And um, it's just hard. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you try to overcome it. And I've done it. I've seen some of the numbers, some of the data as to it's the most targeted population in prison, uh, physically and in every other way. Yes. How difficult was it to be a teenager in a prison um, with adults and hardened criminals, um, old enough to be your father, your grandfather, um, and obviously being, you know, as people know, the youngest and most vulnerable in the facility? Well, what it does is. You know, me, I would describe myself as a cool, calm, collective, and a, you know, nice person. You know, I love to smile. I'm a, I'm a cool guy. But in the, in the facility like that, it, 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 uh, it forces you to be the, the rage, the rage you. Everyone gets angry. Now that what you have, you have to point that on 24-7. You have to put on the angry you 24-7, the mad face 24-7. I'm angry 24-7. I can't be happy. I can't be cool. I can't be calm and collective because now I'm weak. Yep. The numbers, Allison, um, give a little point of reference to the audience. Uh, everybody knows that prison's not supposed to be easy. It's right. a hard place but it's especially hard in every metric you look mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. um, for 16 and 17 year olds in there 
they're victims of, of every kind of violence at an accelerated rate, right? Yes, a absolutely. In terms of the violence between um, from other inmates, yes. as you know, Jermaine has said, from correctional officers themselves. Um, and even we know that sometimes young people are placed in solitary confinement for their own safety, and yet placing a young adolescent in adolescent in um, solitary confinement is detrimental to themselves. Um, and you know there are a number of suicides that happen. Okay, um, this is going to move forward. Uh, the governor is a supporter of this. Um, uh, we could learn in short order if it's part of the budget process if it gets approved. And as we said off the top, it's going to be a um, a stage process um, in 2017 to 17 and then 18 in 2018 have passed. But for anybody that's on the fence right now mm -hmm. in the legislature who says, ah, you know what, I don't want to be known as the soft on crime guy. Yes. Um, give the rationale why um, it, it's a good policy and long term for the society mm -hmm. um, that this is better for everybody involved. Right. Um, we know that the majority of crime that's committed by young people here in Westchester, in New York State, and even a national uh, trend, 70 to 80 percent of their crimes are misdemeanors, which means that the young person is coming back to our community. And so we have to ask ourselves, who do we want coming back to our community? Do we want a young person who has spent time being angry, being abused, you know, f uh, physically and mentally? learning perhaps how to be a better criminal from the older um, criminals that were you know placed in the institution with them or do we want a young person that's come back that has had um, some rehabilitative services the supports that they need to really turn their lives around because the majority of young people as I said committing misdemeanors can turn their lives around with the right supports and so we believe that raising the age to 18 is good for community safety because these young people come back as positive adults. And the issue of raising the age is the topic of our online question this evening. Should New York raise the age of criminal responsibility to 18? Tell us what you have to say both on Twitter and Facebook. When we come back, my interview on this issue continues and we will hear from Jermaine. This is not just a political push, it's personal. And when we return, he will share his story and explain why he's working to make sure that no other young New Yorkers face the same circumstances that he's lived through.